Welcome to Chelsea's Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a chair. Um, I believe if you can paint a chair, you can paint anything because all the little nooks and corners that you have to press the brush into can make a chair pretty tricky. So the first thing I do when painting a chair is I actually start with it upside down. This way you can get all the details underneath that you wouldn't really be able to reach with the chair right side up. So I did that yesterday. Now I'm ready to paint the top. As you can see, I blue, ch blue taped some cane that was in the middle of the chair already. So we're ready to start painting. I'm using my new round brush from Annie Sloan, which I really like. The bristles are super thick, which makes it easy for punching the paint, kind of sticking it into all the corners and nooks on the chair. So that is where I like to start. I like to start on all the corners that you really have to kind of press the paint into and then I can smooth it over with a second cut later on. So I'm just going to kind of press the brush in, dab in it here and there, and then you can bring, bring the paint up, bring the paint down. Again, sometimes I'm pressing the paint into the corners to make sure every inch is covered. So the beginning is kind of just a lot of pressing the paint into where you want it. Pressing it and then, and then you can draw it up, draw it down, smooth it out as you go. more paint on my brush. I don't start with a lot of paint on my brush. I kind of just get just the ends of the bristles. What I like about these brushes by Annie Sloan is they hold a lot of paint. Um, you don't have to stick it in a whole lot. You can just dab the ends in and it'll stretch pretty far. When you're smoothing it out, you always want to go in the direction of the wood. The wood grain. I'm going to go around the seat. Get a little more paint on the brush. I'm using a custom color that I mixed using duck egg blue and pure white by any Sloan chalk paint. So it's a really pale shade of aqua, which I love. I think it's neutral. I think it can go with just about anything. And it's a pretty color for a little accent chair that you might stick in a bedroom or in the corner of a living room. And of course, as you're going, you might see some spots you want to go back over again. So you just take your brush and go back over. Now I'm going to start in the top here. Start pressing the brush into that corner there. And then bring, bring the paint down. Press it in, and bring the paint down. A little more paint. I can already tell this chair is going to need a second coat. Um, most of the pieces I do, I like to use a second coat for really even coverage. So, when you're applying a first coat, don't be super concerned that the paint looks 100% even. That's probably not going to happen on your first coat. So, um, you just want to get coverage. You want to get everywhere covered, even if it's not completely even. And then you can go back over for your second coat and smooth things out, even things out. And I'm just going back and forth here at the top. It's a really smooth piece. Pressing the paint into some nooks in the chair. This is an old chair. This is from my husband's grandmother. Um, they have downsized and we've 
been very fortunate to receive some beautiful pieces from my husband's grandparents. Okay. Get the top here. Get the edges. Now I'll turn the chair around so you can see what's going on in the back. Same thing for the back. Just a little bit of paint on the brush goes a long way. I'm just going to press it into the corners there, the little nooks in the chair. My driveway's not very even, so the chair is rocking back and forth a little bit. This is a really porous piece. Um, it's kind of just soaking the paint in, so it'll definitely need another coat or two. And some furniture is like that. They're really porous pieces, the paint just kind of soaks in. So sometimes it takes a little bit more than one coat to get, get it really even looking. Press that paint in, pull it out where you need it. I'm going to turn it back around and cover the bottom spindles. What I love about working with chalk paint is that it dries super fast, especially on a warm day like this. So as soon as you get your first coat on, you can pretty much just go start on your second coat right away. There's not a lot of, um, doesn't require a long drying period, so that's really nice. Especially if you're working during your kid's nap time and you have a limited amount of time to finish a project. So these lower spindles that I'm working on right now, I started on yesterday. I did the, the bottom of the chair yesterday when it was turned upside down. So I got the spindles pretty well covered. I missed just the tops of them here when I flip the chair over. And I get the front of the seat here. There's spot right back here. the edge of the seat. Okay, so now my first coat is done and I can actually go back over and start on my second coat right now. As you can see, paint is dry. No paint rubbing off my fingers. Isn't that awesome? So I'm going to go back and start over the bug off. I'm going to go start on my second coat now. And this is where you can really even things out. I, I don't know if you can tell here, but the seat of the chair, you can probably see some really uneven spots. And that's okay, because I'm going to um, even everything out now with a good second coat. For the second coat, there's not going to be as much pressing the paint into the little corners and nooks of the chair. Um, I already did that the first time around, so the second coat's really just about evening out the tone of the paint. I think it's better to get just a little bit of paint on your brush at a time, rather than really overloading the brush with paint. I find that I have better control that way, and I don't I don't want to waste my paint. I don't need too much. I don't want to use too much. When I'm working on a piece like a chair that has so many little grooves and corners and nooks, I find quicker strokes like I'm using to be easier than long strokes so, so that the, the paint covers a little bit more evenly.
whenever you're working around blue tape like I have on my seat here, trust the tape. Don't, don't, you know, dance around it. Uh, I use a Scotch Blue Edge Lock tape and I love it. It's going to hold. You don't have to worry about the paint seeping in. So I just did these spindles like five minutes ago and already the paint is dry and I can start working on the second coat. This stuff dries so fast. It's awesome. love the texture of this chair. I use chalk paint a lot to cover veneer and laminated pieces. Um, and I don't mind doing that. There are ways to use chalk paint to create texture, but when you get a solid wood piece, old antique like this, that's really porous, I just think the texture is so beautiful. Okay, so that's um, how I paint a chair, and tomorrow I'll come back with how to wax. Thank you for stopping by.